everyone, um, and it's so exciting to be here to share my research. Um, this is a, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the first major project, this Bhojpuri project that you see here. Um, so when I first encountered Bhojpuri, I, I'm an anthropologist, by the way, I'm not technically a film studies person, so I'm looking at film as a kind of manifestation of social practice. Um, so when I first started looking at Bhojpuri, it was a really new industry, and everybody felt like they knew exactly what it was. It was basically this thing that emerged because Bhojpuri speakers, mainly poor migrant men, uh, really, really, really wanted to see on screen their villages and these kind of village aesthetics, and they wanted a lot of, let's just say it, raunchy uh, material at the same time. And because of what they wanted, the films were being made, and therefore there was this whole like cultural degradation that was happening. So we, so we knew both um, sort of why the films were happening and also what the consequences were. So my work, obviously, seeks to disrupt that narrative a little bit. Um, let's see. Uh, actually, can we go ahead and play the clip? Uh, should I advance a slide? Okay, um, so I'll just show you a little clip of what this actually looks like so you know what You get the idea of what it sounds like. Um, here we go. Thank you. Can you just give me 30 more seconds? Um, okay, so basically you get the idea that uh, she, this is this is a famous Bhojpuri item, item girl, um, Sampav on the set. I was actually around for the filming of this song, so I can tell you a little more about it if you're interested. Um, but, the, but basically she's saying, like, um, I'm running around and there's a, uh, and, and doing all these things, but, but there's a, 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 a virus, basically like a computer virus has gotten into her skirt. So you can see what happens. She, it just the whole system goes mad. Anyway, so Bhojpuri, as you know, probably is spoken in this sort of shaded area on the left side of the map. Uh, but it also is, uh, is diffuses through migration all across the world, and really prominently in places like Mumbai and Delhi. There are huge populations of Bhojpuri migrant laborers. So basically, these are people who are getting more or less blamed for these sexy dances that you just saw. Um, of course. Uh, what, we, what we kind of think of as the way that film works usually is that it's something that represents a society and uses languages that we already have, right? Uh, but my field work actually shows, this is a, this is a film set in, in Bombay where Bhojpuri films are made, that, that these sorts of cultural categories actually get produced during the production of films themselves. Uh, this really changes our, my way of looking at Bhojpuri, uh, because you can see we're not just representing Bihar, we're actually remaking it in Bombay. Um, and the people who, whoops, people who are doing that, come on, the people who are doing that are not actually uh, the audiences, but they're rather the filmmakers themselves who are using their own kind of biases and prejudices about who watches Bhojpuri films uh, and what young migrant men like in order to produce this kind of aesthetic. Uh, and so, as they say, uh, our films need to be a little loud. Who do they need to be a little loud for? Turns out it's not just the people who ultimately watch the films, but also everyone else in the production chain. Uh, so distributors won't pick up a film if it doesn't have item songs in it, right? No one will pay for it. Uh, no one will exhibit it. And your film will sit on the shelves and not get released if you don't, uh, if you don't put these elements into the film. Not necessarily because people won't watch it. That has nothing to do with it. But because no one will buy it on the distribution level. Um, so this is a huge, uh, huge finding, obviously. Um, nonetheless, Bhojpuri films do produce audiences and actually bring people together uh, in a very visible way. Um, one of the ways that I've been looking at it uh, mostly is through, uh, is through audiences in Bombay, like at, at this theater in the Navrang. Um, what's one of the unexpected consequences of Bhojpuri cinema's existence is that it's actually uh, brought together a new kind of visible political subject 
uh, in places of migration. And so my next project is actually about this kind of political communication that can actually happen and produce new kinds of migrant politics in places like Bombay and also Delhi. You may have heard of Manoj Tiwari. He has something to do with politics in this city. This, is, this emerges directly out of the Bhojpuri uh, cinematic experience. Uh, so thank you all so much, and uh, I appreciate it.